Hola a todos y todas y bienvenidos a un nuevo tutorial que he podido preparar para el canal de YouTube. Últimamente sé que no nos vemos mucho por aquí, no tengo todo el tiempo que me gustaría para preparar nuevo contenido para el canal, pero bueno, espero que eso en los próximos meses mejore. Hoy os traigo un tutorial bastante sencillo sobre cómo combinar pincel y aerógrafo, una técnica mixta, por así decirlo, para pintar un elemento que nos suele dar bastantes problemas, las plumas. En este caso, vamos a pintar las alas de sanguíneos. Sin más, os dejo con el vídeo, espero que lo disfrutéis y si os gusta, ya sabéis que podéis apoyar el canal dejando un pequeño comentario y también dando a la campanita, si no lo habéis hecho ya, para suscribiros. Un abrazo a todos y nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo. ¡Adiós! As you can see, here we have Sanguinius still in progress. And David thought that because he was already painting it, he was also going to record the painting process of the wings, because wings are sometimes difficult to paint. In this painting process, we're going to combine brush and airbrush to achieve a very good result in a very simple way. You will see that it's not difficult at all. We are going to start using Gorgrunt A4 and Ratskin Flesh. This last one is the one we used for the base of the wings. We add Gorgranta, the contrast paint to the palette, and you can see that contrast paints are more diluted than normal acrylic, than the usual Citadel paints, but it's still very intense, very saturated. We are going to apply this Gorgranta on the ends of the wings. We want the ends of the wings to be darker than the rest. Because it's already much more diluted, it makes it easier to work on the patterns of all the feathers. And of course, for these first steps, we have to use an already damaged brush. Don't think of using a new one, because you will damage it. By applying this Gorgranta, which is a quite dark color as a wash over all the feathers, we are going to mark the patterns and the volumetry of the feathers. These contrast paints have a quite satin finish, they're quite shiny, but don't worry about this because we're going to use matte paint on top of this and we will be able to balance that shine. Now we add Aegis Black from their third generation range because it's a very matte paint. We mix it with Gorgranta with the contrast that we used before. And we are going to apply this just towards the end of all the feathers. What we are looking for now is to create the color scheme for the wings. We are going to add Vallejos Burnt Red to make it a little bit more reddish and not so black. And this would be the result after applying this on both wings. We are now going to do exactly the same but with a much darker tone and we are going to add it to the end of the feathers. What we want to do is to create the gradient from light to dark from the ochre brown tone towards the very dark tone in the end of the feathers.
And this is the result after doing this on both wings. Because we have applied the dark color, we have almost reached black, now we have to add light, we have to add lighter tones. We use again the same color we used for the base, which as you can see is a quite yellowish ochre. In addition, we are also going to add basic skin tone to the palette, which is a tone that contains quite a lot of white. We mix it with red skin flesh and we begin to mark the areas that are going to be much lighter. At this point we see that this tone is too light, so we are going to add this medium flesh tone to the palette, which as you can see is a slightly darker tone. We mix it and we do exactly the same. We are going to blend mainly the upper part of the feathers, keeping the ends, the edges of the feathers, much darker. It's important not to cover the gaps, otherwise we will lose the dark tone that separates and divides each feather and we will lose the finishing. It is also important not to dilute the paint a lot, because if it's too diluted, it will move a lot through the surface and it will surely end up on the gaps of the feathers. This would be the result after applying this process in both wings. Now we are going to do just the same but with a lighter tone adding some more basic skin tone. But we are going to add this new lighter tone only in some very specific points. This tone will be mainly for the lighter areas of the wings. Don't worry if you stain some areas of the feathers at this point because this is a sketch, we will have the chance to correct that later. And here both wings are ready, now we're going to use the airbrush on top of all this previous brushwork. In this case we're going to use flat earth, as I said before we don't need to be very precise with the brush because as you can see now we're going to use the airbrush to add color filters on top of all that brushwork. The airbrush will help us achieve a smoother finish and soften the gradients.
We just add flat earth on top of the previous work we've done with the brush. Don't worry if you cover some darker areas, we are going to add this tone over all the surface of the wings. And now we are going to do exactly the same but with this blue tone, Andrea Blue from Vallejo Model Color. We use this blue tone to add a cooler tone to the wings. Also, with this tone we will add more color diversity and it won't look so monotonous. And we do exactly the same, but now with this Vallejo's reddish brown. All these color filters we are adding with the airbrush will help us add color diversity and will also soften the gradient we have achieved with the brush. We add Vallejo's Light Flesh, which is a very light tone, it contains a lot of white. And you will see that David is going to mix a lot until he achieves the exact tone he's looking for. This is because he mixed a lot of ochres and reddish browns that he already had in the palette, but he wanted to add a little bit of blue because he was looking for a very light and cold tone. We are going to keep this light tone to add it again in the highest areas of the feathers, the lighter ends. But we are doing this with the brush, because we want to add more definition, we have to be more careful now. As you can see, we are also outlining the feathers. Using flat earth we are going to add some more detail in the intermediate areas because it's a much darker tone. You may think that this step is going to take us a lifetime, but it's not that long. We just need to be careful not to stain too much and the more we define now, the more finished it will look after this step. And this is the result. As you can see, they are very white, they have a lot of light, but they are much more defined. We take the airbrush again and we add the base color, the initial color over all this work we've done with the brush. We add soft filters. We are repeating the same thing but this time we're adding this color filter over a much more detailed brushwork. work. 
We used gold grunt a contrast paint again, but this time with the airbrush, and we added it mainly towards the end, towards the darker ends. We repeat the same, but this time with a little bit more black in the mix, and we add it only towards the dark ends. As you can see, we already have a good result. Now we only have to finish detailing with the brush. For example, we have to increase the contrast and definition in the gaps of the feathers. Some of them are too light. They have lost that dark tone they had. So we add this dark tone again as a wash. These tones that you are seeing are the ones we have in the palette, we have used them. And now what we are going to do is to add the final details. We are going to try and define to increase the contrast in all the feathers. We have to be careful when we add this very light color and keep it only for some very specific areas, for the highest parts of the feathers, because if we cover the yellowish or reddish areas that we have, we will lose those vivid tones and the wings will look too white again. And well, this would be the final result in this wing. Now we would replicate this last step in the other wing and we would have it ready. I hope you liked this new exclusive YouTube video and remember, if you want more video tutorials, you have new content every month in David's Miniature Art Academy pledge. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!